Hi, I'm Will from Tested. I'm here in San Francisco, California at Smith and Ice Cream with Robin Sue Fisher, who's the inventor of this guy right here. It's the Kelvin and it makes the best ice cream I've ever had. Robin, how, how did you get started making nitrogen ice cream? Well, that sort of has two different answers, but the, the reason why we make liquid nitrogen ice cream, mm -hmm. or ice cream with liquid nitrogen, is because um, it makes a smaller ice crystal because it's so cold. It's actually negative 321 degrees Fahrenheit, <laughs> or 76 degrees Kelvin, hence the name of our machine is Kelvin. Okay, um, so a little bit above absolute zero. Totally, and that small ice crystal actually means a really, really smooth texture for you. Mm -hmm. um, and then also, because uh, we are able to freeze it so cold, we're able to freeze it super, super quick. So actually a batch takes about 60 seconds. And that means that we can use all fresh ingredients. So we have no stabilizers, emulsifiers, preservatives, or un any unnecessary ingredients whatsoever. And we actually get to hand select every single one of our ingredients to make it ultra, ultra amazing. So it's, it's made to order ice cream while, you, while people sit here and watch. Exactly, nothing is made before you walk in and order it. How did you get interested in using nitrogen? How did you find nitrogen as ice cream to begin with? Because you're, you're a maker. You designed this machine with mm. some engineers and a bunch of expertise in, in testing. You know, how did you get started with ice cream? So I am just a huge ice cream fanatic. Um, actually, ever since the age of three, I was told that I had two stomachs, one that was solely reserved just for ice cream. And I believe that to this day. Um, but just started diving into uh, the sort of science behind ice cream and what makes a better quality product when I was in grad school, actually at Stanford, and um, was really, really interested in product design, entrepreneurship, and bringing in my passion of ice cream. Um, and just started looking into the actual chemistry behind what makes uh, a really, really smooth, delicious product. And I actually just started renting a doer of liquid nitrogen in my backyard and just started um, ordering random parts off Craigslist, duct taping things together and making ice cream all the time. So, you, so went, that's you, went, how I started. you went down to the welding supply place with all the kind of... I think of, it was like, the first woman ever to walk into okay. that welding supply place. <laughs> I can see that. Um, but yeah, we uh, mad cool welding in, uh, outside of Palo Alto. Um, yeah, that's where we uh, it all got started. Pretty fun. So let's talk about the Kelvin a little bit. It's, yeah. You have a, a fair number of patents about the machine. Mm -hmm. Oh, of course. Um, there's a couple of different things that Vanilla. happen here. Okay, so you have custard pre-made in the back. Is so it's actually, we make all of our bases. On our menu board, you can see the different ingredients that are in everything. And we take extreme, extreme pride in every single one of our ingredients. And we actually um, work with all local purveyors to come up with the best tasting local products. Um, so organic so, milk and... Yeah, organic milk and cream from Beretta. It's an organic mm -hmm. family farm up in Sonoma. And then we get our chocolate from Cho, local here in San Francisco. Love those guys. Best thing, best chocolate in the world. And then we get our um, different produce from farms um, in the area that have um, the best um, supply of those different items. So, you know, we use Blossom Bluff Farms for some of our ingredients and um, Swanton for berries. Um, we try to use county line for mint whenever possible and things like that. Local farms that really specialize in those unique items. So, and it's worth mentioning you guys you do four different flavors a day pretty much, Correct. right? So we have four Calvins at the shop and there's also one other that's the prototype that we use for catering, which we call Wagoneering. The way the company started was selling ice cream on the street out of a reader flyer wagon. And that actually started happening because um, Coming out of grad school, I had this idea. I, I sort of started, you know, making things in my backyard, but realized that we we actually needed something that was much more high tech because it's actually really easy to screw up a product that you make um, with random parts of Craigslist or even a KitchenAid mixer. It doesn't create a consistently high quality product. Which I've, I stuff. have used a KitchenAid mixer to make liquid nitrogen ice cream, and it is occasionally really awesome, and then sometimes like really frozen solid yeah. or too runny or not so good. Totally, it's really, really inconsistent um, and it needs a lot of oversight and um, it's really, really hard to, to perfect that process unless you have a Kelvin. So after two years, I was able to develop a prototype machine and it was 2009 and it's you remember 2009, it was a pretty uh, grim pretty grim time and not yeah. the best time to open up an ice cream shop. So, um, and I was broke because I'd spent all my life savings on building a prototype <laughs> Kelvin. So uh, I basically um, figured out the, the best way to get to this out to the people was to just use what I had and, and hit the streets. So I rigged up a radio flyer wagon with off-road wheels and a battery pack that could power it for about four hours. Mm -hmm. and a, 10 liter doer liquid nitrogen and just started pulling it around the street and uh, tweeting about it. And so that's how we got our big fan following and we do one flavor a day, sell it till we run out and uh, 
got to test a lot of fun flavors and got to get a lot of feedback from our community and that was that was the grassroots beginning. So product development and and, yeah, and, and did you refine the machine more after that as a result? Or we did, did. so there's been sort of, that was the prototype version and then we, um, to get these guys, um, we actually went through a whole UL process. So um, had to go through, you know, safety and, um, and um, cleanliness procedures um, okay. and get it all regulated. So we did uh, sort of do a revamp on it um, okay. before the store. You've obviously done a ton of work to make this much more consistent and replicatable than me dumping liquid nitrogen from a doer into my kitchen aid in the, in the kitchen. What, you, what were the what were the key parts and how you know, how did you actually did you just test and make a lot of ice cream and eat a bunch of ice cream or? Uh, yes, it's. Uh, tough work but someone's got to do that. <laughs> Eating a lot of ice cream is required okay. into the, this process but it was actually a, a pretty scientific um, approach at times but also just like hands-on in the trenches so we developed a, a number of different approaches to mm. um, to working with really cold substances. The issue with liquid nitrogen and anything cold is that it, it's so cold that it sticks to metal and mm -hmm. in a food environment you need to use stainless steel 304 to pass all the regulatory approvals and just to be cleanly. Right, you, you don't want to make a frozen right. air on the outside but, of your jar. But like, you know, the, you know, if you stick your wet tongue to a, a metal pole, you're stuck on it. So think of liquid nitrogen, which is um, obviously creating a, a larger, a wider temperature differential on how quickly that will stick to objects. So the issue was how do you actually churn that small ice crystal without it sticking? And if it sticks to all these surfaces, then it actually makes some really, really hard sort of dip and dots, the pellets yeah, that you saw. Yeah, it's like concrete, basically. Right, and ice then some that would be melty, and it's sort of, the, that's that inconsistently um, churned product, where um, what Kelvin does really, really well is, um, as you see, churns in a way that um, alleviates those problems and creates a consistently um, really, really ultra smooth product. Well, and it, and it comes out of the bowl here. It doesn't need more freezing so after it comes see, out of the bowl. Um, that's amazing. No, it does not need more freezing after it comes out of the bowl, um, for sure. And it, so what Kelvin does, um, it perfects that churning process to create that small ice crystal. Um, and then secondly, it also has smarts. So we have actually a whole software component in, in Kelvin that, um, that measures viscosity and actually gives feedback and actually knows the perfect consistency. And um, so it tells you when it's, when it's so done? It turn, yeah, it turns to that, ul the, that ultra smooth point and then soft. Fantastic. So it's actually Kelvin sort of has a personality of its own and mm -hmm. uh, is a uh, is definitely a, uh, a smart little guy. <laughs> so here is an example of how sort of smooth. I'm going to scoot this into here, but I'll show you. Yeah, the if, you, difference. If, if you've never had this, it's one of the things I like to bring people who've not been to San Francisco before and bring them out here and 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 show them what ice cream really should taste like. Um, so the cool thing is, um, I don't know if you can see this, but. There's just like no graininess in this, and it's um, just ultra, ultra smooth. So I'm gonna give you a little. Fantastic, thank you, Robin. Eating on camera is not easy. Mm. So, Robin said that there's no crystals in the in the ice cream. I really can't explain that. It, like, there's no words to explain how not crystally the ice cream is. It hits your mouth, and it kind of melts away, and you're like, oh, was there anything there? And, and you have this lovely ice cream flavor. It's it's fantastic ice cream. There's, there's a lot that happens with the crystals in the ice cream For sure. because you make it here on site and then you eat it immediately versus say going to the grocery store or going to Baskin Robbins or something and dumping yep. out of the tub. Can you explain what happened, like how the ice crystals work? Sure. Um, so there's a whole process called recrystallization that is just part of um, part of buying ice cream that is not made immediately right in front of you. And basically what that recrystallization process means is as soon as there's a fluctuation in temperature, so this could be opening and closing a freezer door, or it could be getting a pint of ice cream from a manufacturer to a distributor to a grocery store to your home, every time Just it goes- Just coming off the refrigerator yeah. truck, right? Every time it goes down in temperature or up in temperature, even just a few degrees, mm -hmm. you have this process where ice cream melts a little bit, and then it gets cold and it refreezes a little bit, and then it melts a little bit, and then it refreezes a little bit. And every time that happens, that creates a larger ice crystal. 
that's refreezing, and the extreme case is freezer burn. So when you look in your freezer, you open your pint, you're like, whoa, what happened there? There's like a whole, you know. A layer of frost on top? Yeah, yeah a yeah. whole iceberg in there. So um, that's what's happening, actually, every step of the distribution process or at a scoop shop normally when they have um, tubs to scoop out of. That's happening just part of oh, the environmental factors on ice cream. It's the unfortunate nature of bringing ice cream from, from a store right. to your house. It's, and it's actually, that that's the reason why um, yeah. most ice cream has a lot of emulsifiers in it because it tries to compensate for um, the fluctuations in temperature by having binders that keep it together. The, the um, water and the fats right. and the sugar So that's why you get a lot of those ingredients that are sometimes hard to pronounce um, or know <laughs> what they are doing. Um, so at Smitten, we basically remove all worries about shelf life um, and all worries about, about recrystallization and just um, get to include only the ingredients that make it taste exceptionally good. So it's, it's a really unique approach. Let's talk about your location, because you're in kind of a yeah. unique shop here. Um, I think we, we can show people what we look like on that side, but this is a repurposed shipping crate, right? Yeah, it's actually a 40 foot long shipping container that was all rusted out, and we cut it in half, and half is what you see right here, our huh. front of house, and half is our little tiny kitchen. It's so. amazing, so you prep all your ingredients and stuff in the back? It, everything happens, everything that you see here is made right behind that wall. And do you, are these, this, is this egg-based ice cream or no? So some of them are and some okay. of them aren't. Our vanilla and our chocolate are egg-based because okay. they make a sort of a more, um, a flavor with more oomph. Um, whereas some of our other flavors, for instance, are mint, where we really want that mint to shine through and not be muted by kind egg. lighter flavor um, It's a lighter flavor, it's a more potent, fresh flavor. Um, those ones do not have egg yolk um, because it, it'll actually change, uh, it'll not let the highlighted flavor come through. And the reason why most other ice cream does have egg yolk, if you buy ice cream in a grocery store or, or most other manufacturers, is because egg yolk is actually an emulsifier. Ah. So that's one of those things that helps keep it together and prevent against uh, shelf life concerns. Um, whereas, uh, you know, as I said, we, we can take that out because that's not a... Um, that's not something that we have to worry about. Well, fantastic. Thank you so much, Robin, for teaching us a little bit about nitrogen ice cream in the nice Kelvin. Pleasure. And Smitten, uh, when you're in San Francisco, you should check it out. Uh, until next time, I'm Will. Hope to see you very soon. Bye. Thanks.